feeling fancy. Well, the MC uterus is a real thing, and I'm, I'm honestly kind of in disbelief. Like, I used to use that term as a joke, but holy crap, they're really doing it. But why is that bad? I mean, what's wrong with little female representation? Don't women deserve heroes? Ordinarily, these would not be bad things at all. But Disney is absolutely fumbling the bag when it comes to their female and minority characters. Their mere inclusion is not the issue, as has been proven in comic and film history with numerous popular minority and female characters in many genres, not just superheroes. No, the issue is that the writing is so god-awful because the folks at Disney, ironically, only see them as tokens and write them as such. Let's look at a few examples and also look at Marvel's feminine future, foreseeably fraught with failure. Look, I had two resolutions this year. One was to get more people to hit the like button on my videos. The other was to avoid always abusing alliteration. One is already shot, so perhaps you could help me with the first one? The, the button? please? 2023 wrapped up with a bunch of news that the future of Marvel is indeed female. The Marvels ended with a scene of Ms. Marvel recruiting Kate Bishop to join the Young Avengers. Shortly after the movie hit theaters, Marvel confirmed that a third member of the team will be Ant-Man's commie daughter, Cassie Lang. That's all that's been revealed thus far, and I'm assuming that they will stick with a six-person team like the original Avengers and the Thunderbolts. My personal guess for the remaining three youngins will be America Chavez, Riri Williams, Ironheart, and Hulk's son, Scar. If my prediction is correct, it will be yet another clever subversion from Hollywood. <laughs> Missy, what are they trying to do here? It and reverse it. Indeed. This hypothetical team would make a lovely symmetry to the original Avengers that were five guys and one woman. Look, I'm not saying it's automatically doomed. I'm just saying that trying to be clever in this particular way has had bad results in the past. How's it working out for you? What? Being clever. I stated last month that I'm coming around on Kate. I'm not all the way in her corner, but she has potential. Ms. Marvel is too safe right now, and the Marvels made me finally realize her issue. Marvel is treating Kamala with the kid gloves, and they won't let her grow at all. A full show and a movie later, and she's still the wide-eyed, innocent kid that thinks playing hero is fun and glamorous. The Marvels almost included a scene where she realized that her heroes aren't perfect and being a hero means making the tough choices. But, but that would have been morally difficult. We can't have that. So she and the other girls saved the whole day and there was never actually a conflict whatsoever. So Kamala is boring, is what I think the issue is right now. I'm always loath to criticize her character because, you know, she's a plucky teen. But that's also holding the character back. Cassie is fully unlikable, and I'm not sure you're going to find any fans of hers, especially when they chose to show how cool and badass she was by criticizing Paul Rudd. That's like kicking a puppy. It doesn't look cool. Oh, also her speech to Ant-Man sounded insane, coming from a teenager to a guy who helped save the universe. Hey, I've never hit a kid before. I mean, that's like asking who Gandhi is. So the confirmed team isn't looking great so far. Adding my guesses to the mix makes it worse. Ironheart is just as hateable as Cassie. So don't look for audiences busting down the door to root for either of these girls. America Chavez was in Doctor Strange 2, Wanda Boogaloo. I'm, uh, she, what did she do in that movie? Like, as a character. I mean, she was a living MacGuffin for Wanda to get to the book MacGuffin at the Dark MacGuffin Hold, but I can't remember what Chavez actually did or said. Now, I could rewatch it to find out, but I'm not doing that. And lastly, you've got my guess of Scar introduced in the final episode of the She-Hulk show. And I'm, I don't think he actually even said words. My point here is that the audience doesn't know some of these characters and probably doesn't like others. So just like the Marvels, there is no draw for audiences to see this movie. And from the way things are looking, just like the Marvels, Disney seems to be banking on simply casting women to create enough interest to bring in a crowd. Did that go the way you thought it was going to go? Nope. Before we get to the X-Women and the Silver Herfer, the gender swapping alone is not the issue. It's the effect it has on the writing, and this is a very important point. With Disney lately, they think swaps are insanely interesting, and they have to keep reminding you of it. 
In the first episode of the new Doctor Who special, there is a trans character, and the show needs you to know that Rose is trans, that everyone thinks Rose is beautiful, and that since Rose looks like a woman, the Doctor, who is actually an alien that has been a woman in a previous season, doesn't understand certain things about being a woman. They had to write a whole bit about Donna's memories being unlocked by the term binary, and then she and the doctor say binary, non-binary, back and forth, and then Rose says she's both and more. Then Donna tells the doctor that there are certain things he doesn't understand because he's male presenting. Seriously? This is the kind of stupid plot device and garbage dialogue you have to shove into your script when you're attempting to cater to a politically correct crowd, and the show suffered for it. The Marvels contained a scene where Nick Fury shouts, Black Girl Magic! Secret Invasion contains so many characters suddenly realizing that Nick Fury is black, including Nick himself. It gets brought up constantly. She-Hulk is just a vehicle for Jennifer Gao to fight against the internet misogynists and trolls. That's why it contains a male character telling the protagonist Jen to smile more in the first minute. Every man in that show is a caricature because it's not a show. It's a straw man political statement, and to call the writing hackneyed would actually be a compliment compared to what it should be called. In The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, everyone suddenly realizes that Sam Wilson is black, including Sam himself. The whole plot revolves around race relations, and he is now Black Falcon. What you want, Black Falcon? No, no. My daddy told me it's Black Falcon. That's the Black Falcon there. Star Wars fans have been quite vocal about Rey Palpatine's lack of arc or growth. Since she is a woman, she is not allowed to have a real character. John Boyega called out Disney for their use of him and character Finn to make Star Wars seem inclusive, only to toss him aside when his token purpose had been filled. The list is long, but the issue here is that the writers are dying to wink at you and preach to you through the script. So they shove these lines in and they make no sense. They don't fit with the character, or they make the character seem like an ass and give the audience no reason to like them. The writers don't ask themselves, hmm, what would this character do or, or say in this situation? They ask themselves, what do I want to say to the audience? Oh, and how can we shove the plot forward? I'm going to have to say it a bunch more times, but the writing is slop because the writing isn't first priority. The politics are. The scripts have become their own plot device. Last month, we got some more news about the MC uterus when rumors began to spread about the upcoming X-Men project and it being female-focused. Once again, we don't have any details about the actors or characters or anything, but this is already a priority for the studio. It tells you that the writing will be poor because they will need to shoehorn in lines about what it means to be a female hero and probably at least two characters wondering aloud why it's called the X-Men because girls get it done, am I right, ladies? These leaks aren't accidental, by the way. This stuff gets strategically put out because it's what the studio thinks will get people excited and it's also what they are most proud of. We don't know anything about the upcoming Star Wars show, The Acolyte, other than the High Republic setting, and the sexual identity of writer and director Leslie Headland, and how her identity will naturally bleed into the writing. We don't know anything about the upcoming Fantastic Four movie, except we know the Silver Surfer will be a woman. When this is what's advertised, it's what's important. And what's important to Disney is surface level crap. They rarely talk about the characters as people. They rarely talk about the audience and what we might want. But no, they are quick to let us know they hired women to play some parts and they might be gay. I'm so excited. You are not serious people. Let's get back to the Marvels for a second because it was such a perfect example of how identity politics infects script writing. The villain was a woman, but they didn't want to make her seem evil, so she doesn't really do much. I mean, she does suck away one planet's atmosphere or another planet's ocean, so that's kind of a big deal, but they don't make it seem that bad, and they quickly move on. Plus, they try to pin the real blame on Carol Danvers. Then later, Carol makes everything better. So there was, I guess, no real villain. The real antagonist was a misunderstanding? In the end, the other women don't defeat Darben. We don't want to show women killing other women on screen. So she just sort of dies in an accident. And then we move on immediately. That was easy. There was almost no character development for the three mains. And there was a large chunk of the movie cut out during the last round of reshoots. 
This would suggest that a lot of what they cut was the character development. In my review, I noted the lack of what some would call woke content, but some people countered that since so much of the movie was obviously edited out and the characters didn't get much development, it stands to reason that Disney realized the audience doesn't want the message in their movies and left it on the cutting room floor. However, it also stands to reason that those parts and the character development were one and the same, leading some people to believe that without the message, there wasn't much left of the movie, which is what we who actually watched it experienced. It's like if a Souls game has an easy mode, there just won't be much left. Rumor has it that Valkyrie and Captain Marvel were supposed to have a confirmed relationship in the Marvels, but it was cut, leaving Valkyrie as a quick cameo. Valkyrie was also supposed to have a woman leaving her room post-coitus in a scene in Thor 4. She shows up in the Marvels in a suit and tie. I love it when studios try to do representation and they end up doing tired stereotypes. She likes women, so she should dress like a man. Good job, Marvel. The same constant stereotypes plagued Wakanda forever, especially surrounding Ironheart. I've been told that I just don't get that the dialogue contains multiple references to black culture. <laughs> I got it. I got it the first six times. The characters are black. We can see that. Is there anything else to them? Does the writing tell us anything about the character? No, just the skin tone? Okay. Finally, the female direction of the MCU is going to drive male audiences away. And not because our male fragility makes us terrified of strong female characters. Though the reasoning used to put more women in the MCU is quite funny, because that same logic would suggest that men will not go see the movies because they aren't being represented. So is representation important or, or not, Disney? That's rhetorical. No, the real answer is that the only stories Hollywood knows how to tell about women or minorities are stories about them overcoming oppression, the struggle. But if one is oppressed, there must be an oppressor. Now, sometimes it's capitalism, but usually it's white men. That's how a lot of these writers see the world. So back to She-Hulk, why would any man watch that show when it's kind of telling him he is the ultimate villain? Many of these writers are actively antagonistic to one segment of the audience, and then they get mad when that segment doesn't hand over their money. Hollywood and the news media continue to tell men and white people that they are the bad guys, and then that audience isn't super interested in showing up to see these movies. Weird. So who do you think is going to fill out the rest of the Young Avengers roster? And do you think Marvel is going to change course after the tremendous failings of 2023? Or do you think they'll lean into their current direction even harder? Hey, if you are interested in that scene comparison between the introduction of Ironheart and the introduction of Ruffalo Hulk, click right here or, or here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.